in part one of the video we did most of the configurations on the aws side we onboarded a c8000b into the transfer vpc and created the necessary attachments in this video we will do the necessary configurations on vmanage and establish end-to-end -end connectivity so let's begin let's go to vmanage let's create our ipsec templates let's go to feature template let's add a template let's choose VPN interface IPsec template. Let's call this AWS Teach to do IPsec 1. Now shut down. Let's call this IPsec 1. Let's make it device specific and give it a proper name. Let's choose source as interface, Gigabit Ethernet 1. Destination as device specific. Let's choose IQ2. Let's give a pre shared key, which was Cisco 12345. Let's also make the remote IKE as device specific. And leave rest the default and save. Let's copy this template for IPsec 2 for the second tunnel. Let's edit it. And let's just change the names. This name is IPsec2. So it's still Gigabit Ethernet 1. Make it IPsec2. IQ version as 2. And the remote IQ and pointers again IPsec2. Just hit update. We have our IPsec templates. Now let's go ahead and create our BGP template. Let's call this AWS BGP. Uh, AS number was 65,000, so we'll just use that. Let's create a new distribution for redistributing OMP routes. And let's add our neighbor. Let's make it device specific and call this as tunnel one HP neighbor. Let's use remote ASS 64512. Let's use the address family as on. And IPv4. And I don't think we need anything else. So let's go ahead and click add. Let's add our second neighbor for our second tunnel. We'll make it device specific. Call this tunnel to BGP neighbor. Remote ASR 64512. Address family as IPv4 Unicast. Uh, else, so we can go ahead and add on it. Now let's save a template. Now we have our templates ready. So let's go ahead and attach these templates to a device. Let's edit our C8KV template. Let's go to service VPN. 
let's get it let's add our interface ip set which attempts let's also add our pgp template let's click save Let's populate these addresses. Now I populated these addresses. It's basically IPsec tunnel to IP addresses, which is from the 169 range, the tunnel to destination, which we got from the CGW page in AWS. Similarly, we have the IPsec tunnel one IP addresses, private IP addresses, and the destination IP addresses. And obviously, the BGP neighbor uh, for tunnel one and tunnel two. So let's click update. Let's wait for the configuration to get pushed. The configurations have been successfully pushed. So let's go back to our AWS dashboard. Let's refresh this page. Now you can see that both the tunnels are up. So we have successful tunnels from our C8KV to our TGW. So let's go to Transit Gateway Route Tables. Let's select our transit gateway route table. Let's create a propagation from our spoke VPCs. So let's create propagation. Let's choose our VPS, VPC1 attachment. So let's choose the route table again and add our VPC2 propagation as well. Now we have the associations and propagations. Now if you go to routes, you will see that the transit route table now learns the VPC CIDRs through the transit gateway. Let's, let's, let's similarly go to the VPC route table and do a propagation for our VPN attachment. This time choose the VPN attachment. Now if you look at routes, and you will see that the VPC route table now learns the CIDR, which is 192.168.1.0. This is the on premise prefix, which was learned by the C8KV in the transit VPC over OMP, and then it was propagated to the TGW over our IPsec VPN. Now let's go back to vManage dashboard and attach a template for redistributing BGP routes into OMP. So let's go back to our templates. Choose the AWS TGW OMP template, which I had already defined, which basically redistributes PHP into OMP. Go ahead and click next. The configuration is now pushed. Let's go to the device. Let's go to the on premise router and check for OMP received routes. And now you can see that the on-premise router is now able to learn the VPC CIDR subnets 10.10.11.0 and 10.10.12.0. So one final step before connectivity can be established is to add routes in the spoke VPC route tables. So let's go to our route tables. Let's go to our VPC1 route table. Let's go to routes. Let's add a route or not just add a default route pointing towards the TGW. Similarly, let's do this for the VPC2 route table. And save changes. Now we have all the routing in place. So let's go ahead and test the connectivity. In the spoke VPCs, I have two T2 micro instances with ICMP open to test this connectivity. So let's grab the uh, private IP addresses. And from the on premise router, let's ping 10.10.11.123. This is the instance in spoke one. And we can see that we have successful communication. 
look at this config this is a on-premise device and similarly let's check the connectivity towards vpc2 and we have successful communication this way you can successfully establish secure communication from all your sd one branches towards aws however as you saw there are so many configurations that need to be done when we use the manual approach in our next video we will see how we can use cisco cloud on ramp for multi-cloud automation that will greatly simplify this that's it for this demo and thanks for watching